Hi everyone, today we're going to be learning about Terraxicum officinale, L. Weber X FH wig, otherwise known as Blowball, Face O'Clock, and the common dandelion. Dandelions are herbaceous perennial plants that can grow to be about 5 to 30 centimeters tall. This species is a very common lawn weed, however, it is also edible. It was actually originally brought over to North America as a food source and a medicinal plant. The leaves, roots, and blossoms of common dandelion are typically eaten. However, dandelions also leak a sap, which contains latex, and if you're allergic to latex, you probably shouldn't eat dandelions, or even pick them for that matter. Now, if we take a look at the distribution map of common dandelion in North America, it's going to look how you'd expect. There are dandelions everywhere in all of North America. This species is native to Eurasia, but it's now spread almost globally. When it comes to dandelion's natural environment, it prefers moist, sunny areas, but that's just a preference. It will really grow just about anywhere. Some habitats dandelions are commonly found in include roadsides, lawns, and fields. Dandelions emerge in the early spring as a basal rosette. The leaves are green, simple, and oblong. Additionally, each leaf in the rosette can vary greatly from the others in the rosette. For instance, each leaf can be entire or lobed, and if they are lobed, the degree to which they're lobed can greatly vary. Also, the leaf may or may not have a slight pubescence to it. Lastly, as I mentioned before, if you cut open the stem of a dandelion, you'll see that it's hollow and has a white milky sap. This sap does contain latex. Dandelions bloom March to September, but that range may be expanded a bit depending on the weather during that year, because they'll bloom if it's still warm. But when dandelions bloom, they produce a yellow flower head that contains 100 to 300 ligulate florets, which are very similar to ray florets, which look like petals, except these florets are perfect and contain a stamen and a pistil. In this case, our ligulate florets have five stamen and one pistil each. Additionally, dandelions provide a lot of nectar and pollen for many insects, and since they're one of the first to bloom in the spring, they're also one of the first food sources for many bees, butterflies, beetles, moths, and flies. Now, after pollination takes place, the common dandelion will form one of the most iconic seed heads, which is this globe-shaped cluster of brown achenes that have that fluffy pappus attached to it. Each plant can produce upwards of 5,000 wind-dispersed seeds per year. When I was little, I remember making wishes and blowing the dandelion seeds everywhere. I don't really think that did anyone any good, though. Anyway, here is a very similar, less common species, the red-seeded dandelion, otherwise known as Taraxicum atherospermium, which can easily be told apart from the common dandelion by the color of its seeds. Common dandelion has brown seeds, and red-seeded dandelion has red seeds. Lastly, surprisingly, common dandelion has a very thick, deep tap root that can penetrate up to 3 to 4.5 meters down. And that's just one of the reasons why they're so difficult to get rid of. Alrighty, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed learning about the common dandelion, otherwise known as Taraxicum officinale, with me. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in my next video.